Good evening. There's really nothing like gasoline maxing across some good old American roads. But I've wondered as much as the next guy, what if my car could drive me around? Well today, I've got some good news. Waymo, the self-driving car company owned by Google, has just started testing right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Alongside Waymo, you might know about Tesla's autopilot technologies and Elon Musk's army of self-driving and self-destructing Cybertrucks. Today's video, we race to find out what will self-driving cars do to our cities. Tech companies and car companies have been trying to crack this nut for the past century, with various improvements year over year in the name of safety. Up until the past few decades, we've actually been reducing vehicle fatalities year over year due to various improvements such as seatbelts, airbags, smart crash prediction, and vehicle awareness technologies. These overall government incentives for better R&D research have actually been able to force car companies to make our roads safer despite the US putting tens of millions of new cars on the road every decade. Prolific figures like this guy have touted promises of self-driving technology as early as 2017, even when a vehicle slams into oncoming traffic at 70 miles per hour, or when the vehicle is faced with the frightening challenge of a tram track or a bollard. There are six levels of autonomous vehicle technologies recognized by the US government, ranging from level zero, being no self-driving technology at all, to level five, which means fully self-driving. Tesla's autopilot is only level two software, meaning the driver itself is liable at all times. Last December, Mercedes-Benz achieved level three self-driving. This level allows the driver to not be a tent at all, until the car calls for the user to take control. Level 4 self-driving is being researched by several companies that have been allowed to test their technologies on public roads through automated robotaxis that will function a lot like Ubers. The most successful in the US has been Waymo, which operates in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Phoenix, Arizona. The runner-up is General Motors Cruise, which operates in San Francisco. China is also leading the charge in self-driving technologies, with many companies sprouting up, such as Xpeng, Huawei, Xiaomi, Neo, and Li Auto, just to name a few. I was beginning to drink the Kool-Aid, dreaming of a future when my 2008 Honda Element would park itself at the public's parking lot. It was at this moment where I realized I needed to take a step back. What's the catch? If you ask these companies on the state of self-driving vehicles, they'll claim that their cars are significantly safer than real humans. Let's look at some real numbers. If you ask Waymo, they claimed last December that against human benchmarks, they saw an 85% reduction in injury-related crash rates and a 57% reduction in police reported crash rates. Cruise also reports 65% fewer collisions after their first 1 million driverless miles. Tesla consistently claims that autopilot is 10 times safer than a human driver and 5 times safer than a Tesla with no autopilot enabled. But as you can tell, it's extremely difficult to measure these statistics as there's absolutely no standardization and reported statistics. I tried to normalize the comparison between the few companies and found that Waymo performs slightly better than Cruise on average, and the statistics for human benchmarks they compare to vary widely. However, Tesla's autopilot is basically impossible to compare to these two robotaxi companies, since it's a completely different classification of technology and operates on completely different roads than the other two softwares. Tesla claims a 43% reduction in crashes with autopilot enabled, but according to a study by Noah Goodman and others, these metrics do not factor in road types against NHTSA road data. And when adjusted, the improvement is only 10% over normal assist technologies. And when correcting for age demographics, there's an actual 11% increase in crash rates due towards ages being skewed towards older demographics. So while these companies claim that self-driving technology can make driving so much safer, there are extreme limitations to these comparisons. These robotaxis operate in geofence limited locations, and it's really hard to compare to real-world drivers across the country. Last December, a self-driving Waymo car struck a cyclist and caused minor injuries. Also last year, Cruise ran over a pedestrian, and as a safety measure, it dragged them 20 feet at a speed of 7 miles per hour. General Motors was then charged with a $1.5 million penalty for underreporting the severity of this accident, and since then, Cruise has mostly recalled all operations in San Francisco and lost its CEO and 25% of their workforce. In total, Tesla's full self driving technology has killed 14 different people and has significantly injured 49 different people before the software was recalled late last year. However, Tesla's self driving has been operating for a lot longer and is a lot more widespread and available to consumers. Consumers. 
Headlines like these should not be taken lightly. According to Pew Research Center in 2022, 73% of respondents were either unsure on self-driving or flat out thought it was a bad idea. But also based on 2022 data, 116 people die every single day in car-related accidents. And over 6,500 people get significantly injured in car-related accidents across the country every single day. So the ultimate question is, how do we differentiate the obvious tech bro grift from real innovation and technologies that could save everyday lives? The last example of this when it came to transportation was Uber and the following explosion in ride share across the country and across the world. Uber was single-handedly able to market share max the competition by using VC money to practically kill public transit and taxi services and successfully was able to grift governments into thinking that ride share was the future and the mobility revolution. But now that VC money that made Ubers and Lyfts so cheap has now dried up. I've also become the default rideshare for many people because there aren't competitive options. Now, rideshare is definitely useful, especially in places that have limited or no public transportation. The grift here is that rideshare companies will exploit their workers, overcharge for their service, and add tens of thousands of new cars onto the roads every single day, despite claiming exactly the opposite. And you know, AVs sound extremely familiar, promising a mobility revolution and similar grifty slogans. Self-driving technologies, and especially self-driving companies, are competing with rideshare and public transportation, not normal drivers, and will not make traffic better. Another massive concern for self-driving is the ongoing conversation of job automation. Many are concerned about the impact that automation will have on all of our jobs. Fast food companies are replacing cashiers with touchscreen kiosks. Grocery stores are replacing baggers with self-checkout lanes. Now AI is challenging all sorts of fields, including design, illustration, graphic design, writing, video editing, and software engineering. Overall, the United States government's accountability office estimates that 9% to 47% of all current jobs will be automated in the future. This impeding threat of automation is being a lot of people extremely anxious about their job security, especially when the most wealthy 1% members of our society are making more money than they have ever before. Global Policy Solutions estimates that at least 4 million jobs will be lost if we rapidly transition to self-driving vehicles. This doesn't bode well for many that make their living off of their vehicle, including freight, ride hail, delivery, and so many other industries. These self-driving vehicles will be extremely limited to people who have access to technology, and especially limited to those that can literally afford the self-driving taxi service. It's really a continued effort of car-dependent sprawl, and the exact same problem that lies behind rideshare companies like Uber. Self-driving companies are promising a mobility revolution, but really, it's just a continuation of car dependency. Additionally, as we've seen with facial recognition and AI, there's extreme bias by these technologies against people of color, and to children. Cornell University found through testing 8,000 different images that pedestrian detection was 20% more accurate for adults versus children and 7.5% more accurate for white people over darker skin tones. What this means is that while self-driving companies can claim that their cars are much safer than human drivers, there is a guaranteed bias against certain types of people outside of their vehicles. So self-driving technology could do wonderful things to improve vehicle safety. But the real thing we have to confront is the all or nothing scenario that's being pushed. I think the real grift here is that we're being told that we have to min-max the entire system, when really, self-driving is just another tool that can be applied in certain scenarios. I came across an exciting article by Bloomberg City Lab, pitting a Manhattan Institute analysis who was pro-self-driving against several San Francisco activists. The advocate argued that cities could be transformed by these self-driving technologies. They envisioned cities that could forego the need for private vehicles, parking, and all the infrastructure that is required to store cars. And instead of public transportation services, the city would be served by self-driving vehicles. And instead of having transit stops, we could instead have self-driving pickup and drop-off locations. And in theory, we could repurpose a lot of city streets as more pedestrian-focused corridors. However, the critics argued that self-driving cars would simply just add more cars to the road, and cities would just not be transformed by self-driving technologies. They argue, that cars are fundamentally incompatible with cities, and envisioning a future city around autonomous cars would not look much different than it does right now. They say, AVs fail in the same way normal cars do. However, AVs also fail in new ways. I was starting to question my very consciousness. Lost in the world of the imaginary future, I struggled to see what outcome laid ahead of me. Do I take the blue pill and embrace my AI overlords, or do I take the red pill and return to the great urban cities of yesterday? That's when it clicked. Finally, the solution to traffic we've been searching for all this time. And it was sitting right in front of me. The tech bros are right, but I propose, what if we expanded the size of these AVs to fit maybe 30 people? While we're at it, we could optimize these high capacity pods 
to move on dedicated, predictable time schedules. For the routes that seem a little bit more popular than other routes, we could put rails into the ground, create even more higher capacity pods that would travel along these rails. We could even string the pods together, create multi-pod transportation systems that would move thousands more people than we could previously. We could give this system a futuristic sounding name, like the Hyperloop. I knew it all along. I'd fix traffic. The real issue at hand to take away from this entire video is that self-driving can be real useful in suburban and rural environments. Self-driving will be wonderful for trips that absolutely must be made by car, such as long-distance interstate trips and getting around rural, exurban, and suburban areas that aren't effectively served by public transportation. However, self-driving in dense urban areas just will never mesh well with dense urban environments, just as human-driven cars are today. That's the real grift here. Ultimately, self-driving is just a continuation of the car brain status quo we live in here in America. These companies are spending billions and millions of dollars of R&D money just to invent something that will make traffic itself more enjoyable without actually addressing the actual problem, the traffic itself. Maybe one day these companies will step back and realize some problems can't be engineered out of. Now, if you'll excuse me, the only question I have remaining is, when can I sign up for Waymo? Perfect. This vehicle has traffic hazards. The group Safe Street Rebels is placing cones on Cruise and Waymo cars as a way to temporarily stop them. They want these cars off the road permanently. Expanded and basically unfettered access to the city streets is a really bad idea.